Mr. Chairman, Attorney General Ellison, I want to thank you for testifying, uh, but also I'd like to apologize. Uh, perhaps you thought you were returning uh, to a committee that you once served on, uh, the Committee on Financial Services, but that committee doesn't exist anymore. You're, we are now the Committee of Culture Wars. In order to shine light on what is fact and what isn't, I want to ask you a number of questions about the duties of fiduciaries. As you know, most Americans invest their funds in pension plans like CalSTRS or the Minnesota State Retirement System or in mutual funds. These pension plans, mutual funds and others, are required by law to act as fiduciaries and work in the best interest of investors. So Attorney General Ellison, I'd like to ask you a series of yes or no questions about how a fiduciary evaluates the investments they make on behalf of their beneficiaries. Is it true that a fiduciary's main responsibility is to secure the strongest possible risk adjusted returns for their investors or beneficiaries? Yes, ma'am. If a company has significant assets exposed to physical risk, for example, manufacturing facilities that are in an area that experiences frequent hurricanes and sea level rise, would a fiduciary be within their duties to consider that risk? I think it would be their duty. If a company's core product poses significant risk to human health as a result, foreseeable liability risk to the manufacturer, would a fiduciary be within their duties to consider that risk? Absolutely. Let's say a fiduciary has reason to believe that a company's internal accounting controls and independent board oversight are severely deficient. Do you think the fiduciary should be permitted to offer a shareholder proposal on behalf of their beneficiaries at a company's annual meeting, urging that company to improve its controls and oversight? Yes, it would be expected. Now, there is a bill that has been noticed for this hearing that would prohibit making proposals like this because they are, quote, governance related. Do you think it serves the interests of investors to prohibit such proposals? No, ma'am, I don't think they do. Attorney General, Republicans have labeled any program they don't like as socialist, from Medicare to Social Security. But it seems to me that by trying to block the owners of capital, investors, and their chosen fiduciaries from exercising their rights and from trying to make money, Republicans may need a lesson on how capitalism actually works. What do you think, Mr. Ellison? Well, I think that risk-adjusted uh, factors and considerations uh, are important to advance the best interests of the beneficiaries of the pension fund that I sit on, and I want to know all the information. Uh, and certainly, um, there are numerous examples of how ESG factors would benefit those beneficiaries. And in fact, they demand it. They ask us to factor in those risk factors. Thank you, Ms. Ellison. I want to turn to private funds. Today, private equity funds hold approximately $7 trillion, and venture capital funds hold $1 trillion. However, they are not required to disclose their investments in women and minority-owned businesses or in companies that evaluate even environmental, social, and governance factors. These private funds nowadays play an indispensable role in our economy. Private equity and other private funds are involved in mergers and acquisitions, lending and restructuring of huge companies. Venture capital funds provide funding to startups and early stage companies. This lack of private fund transparency makes it difficult for investors like pension plans to value the fund, including by understanding the fund's investments in women-owned, diverse-owned businesses, and businesses that promote diversity, equity, and sustainability. What are your views on the lack of transparency as it relates to private funds? How could we achieve the types of transparency, accountability, and really sustainable future we want to achieve without increasing our understanding of the investment policies and practices of private funds? 
I think groupthink is uh, dangerous uh, for corporate governance. I think groupthink leads to uh, not considering factors that impact the company. And so we need diversity, we need different perspectives in order to have a company that can factor in everything that impinges upon the bottom line uh, for whether investors or beneficiaries of a pension fund. So we need, we need to factor it all in. Gentlelady's time's expired. Thank you. You're back. Thank uh, you.